Hi, my name is Diana Kennedy, and I'm here today to talk to you about an, uh, a concerned group of parents that call itself Play It Safe Minneapolis. But I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that I'm just thrilled to be back here. It's like a um, really warm homecoming for me. Um, I'll first tell you a little bit about myself. Do I push this button? The green one? Mm -hmm. That's my family. That's me and my family. That's my wife, Jen, on the right, and those are my kids, Stella and Darby. When Darby was born two and a half years ago, I left my job at Eureka Recycling after 13 years to raise these little people and to make amazing Halloween costumes. <laughs> it's true. Those are the people who raised me. That's my dad at the top and my mom below him. I grew up in Iowa, the daughter of this Iowa farm boy, and my dad was a chemical fertilizer dealer for farmers. Um, and at a very early age, I learned the impact of big business, big industry, the chemical industry on a community. My mom there spends a lot of time being pissed off at the world, the way the world is, particularly around issues of power and women, and I love her for that. Um, they um, can build anything, they can fix anything, they can make anything, and if you can't do those things, you shouldn't have that thing. That's where they come from. So, <laughs> those are the people who raised me personally. The two people who I think had the biggest job of raising me professionally were this woman. Um, that's Adrienne Christensen. She's a professor at McAllister College, and she was my professor when I landed there. And she had the gall to tell me I had no idea how to write. And I was like, hmm. And in proving her that I could figure that out, she actually taught me how to write and make incredibly solid arguments, not just based on what I believe. Um, the other person, and perhaps the person who had the greatest impact on my life professionally, is one of my dearest friends, and that's Miss Susan Hubbard, who's in the back of the room. <laughs> yep. Under her leadership, I watched the zero waste movement really emerge from this very rich tradition of recycling. And I would say with the exception of my parents and my children, no one else on earth has asked me to apply my talents and my time to making my community better than she has. So there you go, Susan. Um, which is why when I took my kids to a local neighborhood playground, and I realized we were walking around on shredded tires on a hot 90 degree summer day, and I was walking back from that stinky mess, and I was like pulling chips out of my one-year-old's mouth at the time. I was like, oh no, something is wrong here. And now I feel called to do something about it, right? And so I thought, I gotta call my people at Eureka. I gotta call up Brian and find out about tires and call. See, I gotta call, I gotta, we're gonna have to get shovels out here and we're gonna have to just get rid of this stuff. So I started doing a little research and what I found is that the problem was bigger, of course, than my backyard. Um, the stuff on the bottom is what I'm talking about. It's called crumb rubber. No, I'm sorry. The stuff on the bottom is called tire mulch. And it's just ground up tires, basically, that they use in playgrounds. And it's in 47 elementary and middle school playgrounds in the city of Minneapolis. You can also buy bags of it at Home Depot if you'd like to put it in your own backyard, but I would not recommend that. Um, there is another product made out of tires called crumb rubber. It's tiny, tiny little pellets, like tiny stuff. You can see it in the hands there. And it's used as infield in artificial turf. It's used widely. There are only eight fields in Minneapolis that use it, but almost every single suburban area has those fields. So I was like, oh no, shoot, it's really big. Now I've got to get to work. So I started thinking, what the hell, whose idea was this? How does this happen? I called my dad, right? because he's the one who tells us stories about throwing tires on brush fires on the farm to get them nice and hot, and they blur, burn black, so they do it at night, so the fire department wouldn't come. I thought he might know something about tires. He goes, that's a terrible idea. There's just nothing okay about that. When my dad says there's nothing okay about that, there's nothing <laughs> okay about that. And so what we did is I started looking around, and this is, I'm gonna give you the most abbreviated story I can tell. If you wanna know the whole history of how this happened, you come see me, and we'll go have a beer with Brian Ukenna, and we will sit down and talk about tires for a long time. But what happened was, um, the US Environmental Protection Agency got really interested in the stockpile issue going on in the United States, and it was a real issue, these piles and piles of tires building up. And they invested millions of dollars in 
tire mulch and crumb rubber, rubber and other ways to solve our problem with waste. They partnered with the rubber industry, they partnered with great states like the state of Minnesota, and they created markets for these products and persistently, that's right out of their marketing plan, persistently sold them. They funded the installation of fields and playgrounds in states like Minnesota, and Minnesota did the same. So school districts like Minneapolis believed the claims that these were safe products, and in fact superior to that very dangerous wood mulch that gives you splinters, <laughs> and that they widely installed it. Actually, th that's a little bit unfair. They really were worried about kids falling off of really high playground equipment, and they were told that this was better for falls. I just had my daughter's cast taken off, she broke her wrist on this stuff from a very low monkey bar. Kids fall on playgrounds and break things. So. Um, the reason why this happened is, you know, nobody really looked at the health issues of this before they started looking at the waste issue of this. And it's a very easy and familiar story, right? We look at recycling as a way to solve our problems with waste, but you don't spend much time in the recycling field to know that recycling is not really going to solve that problem. So this little design just came up on Google when I was preparing for this, and I was like, oh yeah, that's right. We just manufacture them. They just show up out of nowhere and then they're waste. What about before we manufacture them? Why do we need so many? Why are they made to be disposable? What is wrong? Why are they made toxic? What is the deal with these tires? Why aren't we spending our resources doing that? Because no amount of cute craft projects is gonna solve this problem with waste. <laughs> and I'm an expert, so I know that it's not gonna work, right? So what we really need is to redesign them. And I can tell you that if we were to be looking at the best product to put in our children's play areas, we would not seek this material out. We would not go for this. This is not what we would pick. So you're just gonna have to take my word as to why, but I'll tell you real quickly. It's because it's toxic. It's toxic for our bodies and it's toxic for the environment. Um, a recent rail, Yale study really puts it, I think, the best. They say crumb rubber and tire mulch are a venerable witch's brew of toxic substances. This stuff includes carcinogens, allergens, irritants, endocrine disruptors, reproductive toxins, developmental toxins, and more. Which is hard, right? It's okay on a car. It's okay to put it on your tire, maybe, I don't know. But you're putting it in a kid's playground. Now children, we know, are way more susceptible to this stuff. As Sharonda was telling you, kids' products are important because kids are sensitive. They're growing. They eat more food, they drink more water, they breathe more air than you do. They are developing, and I'm not talking just about little kids like mine. Teenagers are growing their brains and their reproductive systems and their neurological systems, and these things interrupt that. They also play in this stuff. Like, you would go to this playground and you'd be like, oh, we're just gonna walk around on it. These kids like dig in it and throw it on their bodies and roll around in it, and soccer goalies are sliding into the crumb rubber. Lots of cases of cancer among goalies now. There's a lot of anecdotal information coming out. And it gets really stuck in, in, in them. The, the other thing, the reason why it's so important to protect these kids is because they don't make choices about where they, what material is put in their playgrounds and on their fields. Their schools do, their parents do, the community does. So we have to make the right choices for them. In addition to our bodies, the stuff is also not super great for the environment. You can obviously see it spreads out all over and it goes down the storm drain. But it also gets stuck on their bodies, and when they come home with it, it's in your house and, you know, in your shoes. It's, I know, it happened to me. My kid plays on one of these in recess. I was appalled to find it on the bathroom floor. But it ends up down your laundry tub drains, it ends up down your shower drains, and it's going to water treatment plants in our cities. It also is hot, it's hot stuff. They have found a, a man in um, New York, Stuart um, Gaffin, was studying hot spots in New York City, kind of looking at climate change, right? Because climate change is gonna make everything hotter and we need to keep our cities cool because they're dangerous places to be. And the hot spots that showed up on the map were crumb rubber fields. So they're gonna have to be taken out. Now, I got the notice, I know, I'm gonna rip through this. 
good news is the state of Minnesota is paying attention. Our good friends at Healthy Legacy who helped get BPA out of sippy cups and formaldehyde out of kids' products are on this at the state level. Karen Clark has um, authored some legislation to try to put a moratorium on this material at the state level. Here in the city of Minneapolis, they're examining this issue in detail to try to figure out if it should be allowed. And we've actually talked to the folks at um, the school board, school administration, and they're listening and they're interested. Now, the two challenges which I will rush through to this are, when it comes to chemicals, the framework for how we look, about, how we look at them has been constructed by industry not by public health. So the very way we're taught to think about risk and chemicals is based on, well, does it hurt us instead of is it safe for us? And so the, pa the, the onerous is on us as citizens to say it's not good for us, whereas the industry can say, well, you can't prove it's not. And so we have that really big hurdle to get over. Now we're coming in as a bunch of concerned parents, which I'm not used to. I'm used to walking in with the power of your recycling behind me. But as a bunch of concerned parents, it's very easy to discredit where we're coming from. And what I'm finding, and this is a particularly twisted um, challenge, is that you know this issue is coming up out of South Minneapolis. This is a bunch of white moms who are saying that this is a problem which is great, convincing them that they should be thinking about somebody other than their children and all the children in the city is totally doable, totally fine, right? We can get that done. But this, the, I found that now at the government level, we're hearing, well, you, you, we can't hear from you at all until we hear from everybody in the whole city. And this has to be an issue that everybody in the whole city cares about. And so now we as parents are now creating these great networks, which we can do, but it's hard. There's lots of parents with lots more challenges than I have to connect and reach out to every other community to raise this issue. And I don't know about you, but um, it's not like folks aren't busy up in North Minneapolis trying to get rid of a metal recycler that blows through their air permits and deal with HERC, which I don't have to deal with. But you know, part of the reason I'm here today is that barrier is to say, okay, we need to be working with neighbors organizing for change but I can't ask them to just come on board to the playground issue. All the moms in South Minneapolis have to come on board with HERC and come on board with the metal recyclers so that we can fix all these problems together. So that's it. Thank you.